My name is Dorothy Hawks, and today we're going to be reviewing equations of lines. We're going to be looking at equations of lines, and then we're going to be graphing them. Many of you probably remember the equation y equals mx plus b, where the m gives us the slope of the line, and the b gives us the y-intercept. example, y equals 2x plus 3. So in this equation, the slope is the coefficient of the x, the 2, and the y-intercept is the 3. We're going to look at a couple of different ways that we can graph this line. Probably one of the most straightforward ones is simply to find points. And we're going to find points by finding x and y values that make this equation true. I'm going to use a table, and sometimes books use a table that goes up and down. Sometimes you see tables that go across. I'm going to start by just choosing numbers for x, and then we're going to find the corresponding y values that would make the equation true. We can look at this a couple of different ways. One way is to simply look at the 2x plus 3 as telling us what we do to the input x. And so if I look at input x, this formula tells me that I'm going to multiply by 2, and then we're going to add 3. So we can simply use that rule to find some y values. When my input is x, I'm going to multiply by 2. 0 times 2 gives me 0, and adding 3 gives me 3. If my input is 1, I'm going to multiply by 2, gives me 2, adding 3 gives me 5. We can also just use the formula directly to find these points. My formula is y is equal to 2 times x plus 3. We're going to change our x values, so instead of putting a, the x there, I'm just going to put parentheses. And now, I'm going to put my x values in the parentheses. So here, x is equal to 2, I put the 2 in parentheses, and I'm going to do what this rule tells me, but I can see it in the formula. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. And then for the input of 3, I put 3 in the parentheses. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. And now I can simply graph these points, and when I graph them, I'm graphing them as the ordered pairs, 0, 3, 1, 5, 2, 7, and 3, 9. Okay, on the graph, let me just go through the points again. My first point was 0, 3. My x value was 0, my y value is 3. So we're at this point right here. And I'm going to circle it so that we can, so it will show up better. My next point is 1, 5. My x value is 1. My y value is 5. My next value is, my next numbers are 2, 7. x is 2, y is 7. And then my uh, fourth point is 3, 9. And when we look at these points, we can see that they line up in a straight line. And now I can draw the line through those points, and I can kind of use the pattern that's been established to extend my line even where I don't have now, what do the slope and the intercept have to do with the line that we've drawn? The slope gives us some measure of how slanted the line is. And in this case, this is a pretty steep line. So uh, we're looking just for a number that gives us uh, some sort of indication of that slope. And from the graph, one of the things that we look at is as they go from point to point, how is, how is are the y value changing versus the x values? And you may know these by the terms rise and run. As I go from the point 0, 3 up to this point, I'm going up 2. That's the rise. And then I'm going in the x direction, 1. That's the run. And so if I look at the slope as rise over run, see the 2 over 1. Now I could also see this if I looked at my, my table. If I look at my table and I just look at how are the y values changing comparing to the x's, my y values when I go from 3 to 5, I'm increasing by 2. But my x values as I go from 0 to 1, I only increase by 1. And that pattern remains constant when we're looking at the points. From 5 to 7, I've increased by 2. Here, by one, 
here by two and here by one. And uh, our slope here, the rise over run, can also be just translated as to be, it's this, the change in the y or the change in the outputs divided by the change in the x values or the change in the inputs. And so again, we have the equation y equals 2x plus 3. The number here that we said up here indicated slope does indicate slope using our formula rise over run, 2 over 1, and also looking at our chart as the change in y's over the change in x's. Now the y-intercept just means that's the place that we cross the y-axis. So if I look at the graph here, we can see that I cross the, the y-axis at the point 0, 3. So we'd say that the y-intercept is 3, and that corresponds to the b in the equation. Now we can also, when we look at the table, when we're looking for the y-intercept, on the y-axis, our x value is always equal to 0. So we see when x is equal to 0, the y is equal to 3, and we've got our y-intercept. So our equation, again, 2x plus 3, the 2 indicated the slope, and the 3 indicated the y-intercept. Now another way that we could have graphed this line was to start with the y-intercept. We could have started right here at the point 0, 3, and then we could have used the slope to find the others. So I could have simply gone up to over 1, up to, over 1, and collect all those points on the line that would have that same pattern. 